How was the Byzantine Empire formed? The Byzantine Empire was a continuation of the Roman Empire its citizens even called themselves Romans. Two dates are given for the formation of the Byzantine Empire, which, though boundaries shifted constantly, was centered in Asia Minor and the Balkan Peninsula, in AD 395, upon the death of Emperor Theodosius the Great. The Roman Empire was divided into two, East and West. In the years that followed, the West Roman Empire was subject to repeated attacks from nomadic barbarian groups. And Rome finally fell in 476. The East Roman Empire survived as the Byzantine Empire, which, after the fall of Rome, laid claim to much of the lands in the West. However, many historians date the beginning of the Byzantine Empire. Earlier at AD 330, when Roman Emperor Constantine the Great moved the capital of the then United Roman Empire from Rome to Byzantium, present-day Istanbul, Turkey subsequently known as Constantinople. By this definition of the empire, Constantine the Great was its first ruler. He was succeeded by nearly 100 rulers over the course of more than 1,000 years of Byzantine rule. At its height, during the 6th century reign of Justinian I from 483 to 565, the empire included parts of southern and eastern Europe, northern Africa, and the Middle East. The Byzantine Empire ended when the Ottoman Turks conquered Constantinople in 1453. Who said Veni, Vidi, Vici, and what does it mean? The famous words were written by Roman statesman and general Julius Caesar, 100-44b. C. As he announced the victory of his army in Asia Minor in early August 47 BC. The extraordinarily concise message, which Caesar dispatched to Rome, means simply I came, I saw, I conquered. The general had defeated Pharnaces II, 63-47 BC. In a fight for control of Pontus, an ancient kingdom in northeast Asia Minor. The brief but decisive battle took place near Zela, in present-day Turkey. Why is the equation E equals MC2 historically significant? The famous equation was put forth in 1905 by German-born physicist and Nobel laureate. 1921, Albert Einstein, 1879-1955, and became important to history largely because it. Along with the quantum theory, developed by Max Planck in 1900, laid the foundation for nuclear energy. It is part of Einstein's theory of relativity, 1905-1916. In the formula, E is energy, M is mass. And C squared is a constant factor equal to the speed of light squared. The equation illustrates the relationship between, and exchangeability of, energy and matter. In the 1930s, when scientists discovered a way to split atoms, 
the minute particles of which elements are made, they learned that the subatomic particles that were created have a total mass less than the mass of the original atom. In other words, when the atom was split, part of the mass of the atom had been changed into subatomic particles but some of it had been converted into energy. Using Einstein's formula E equals mc2. The scientists calculated how much energy was produced by splitting an atom. This atom splitting method for creating energy is the basis for nuclear energy. The term nuclear refers to the atomic process, which uses the nucleus or central portion of an atom to release energy. Today, we live in the nuclear age, where power and weapons are produced using the atomic process for creating energy. What were the five-year plans? These were the plans initiated by Premier Joseph Stalin. 1879 to 1953, of the Soviet Union to speed industrialization of the U. SSR. When was the Berlin Wall dismantled? The barrier wall surrounding West Berlin began coming down in November 1989. As a wave of democratization swept Europe, the concrete, electrically fortified wall was first. Built in 1961 as a barbed wire and cinder block structure. Communist East German leader Walter Ulbricht, 1893-1973, convinced Soviet Premier Nikita Khrushchev. 1894-1971, that the wall was needed to prevent people from fleeing Communist Eastern Europe. Before the wall was erected, an estimated 2.5 million people had fled to the free world through West Berlin. After its completion, perhaps 5,000 managed to escape. Hundreds died trying. When the wall was complete, it had an average height of 12 feet and ran more than 100 miles, along which there were posts where armed East German guards stood sentinel. Preventing their countrymen from escaping to the west. The wall completely surrounded West Berlin and divided the German capital between East and West, communism, and the free world. The wall was a symbol of communism's oppression and of the Cold War. On June 26, 1963, President John F. Kennedy delivered his memorable I am a Berliner speech in its shadows, saying There are some who say communism is the wave of the future, let them come to Berlin. He went on to say that The wall was a vivid demonstration of the failure of the communist system And that though democracy is not perfect Democratic nations had never had to put up a wall to keep our people in. On June 12, 1987, President Ronald Reagan, 1911-2004, addressed West Berliners at the Wall's Brandenburg Gate. His now famous speech was audible on the East Berlin side of the Wall as well. There. Reagan issued a challenge to Soviet leader Mikhail Gorbachev, 1931, saying if you seek peace, 
If you seek prosperity for the Soviet Union and Eastern Europe, if you seek liberalization, come here to this wall, Mr. Gorbachev. Tear down this wall. East Germany's communist government was finally toppled in. October 1989. On November 9 restrictions between the two Berlins were lifted, and the wall was opened. The resulting celebration brought the wall down. With gleeful Berliners chipping away at the barrier, it was gradually dismantled. By 2005 only a few sections of the wall and some watchtowers still existed the capital no longer divided, the country a unified, democratic Germany. Is anthrax a new disease? No, the disease dates back thousands of years, at least to biblical times. But its potential use as a bioterrorism weapon is relatively recent. Anthrax is caused by the Bacillus anthracis bacterium, spores that can survive in soil for years. It is mainly a disease of grass-eating livestock. But humans who work with herd animals may become infected through exposure. In humans, anthrax occurs as a cutaneous, skin, form, as a pulmonary, inhaled form, or as an intestinal infection after the consumption of contaminated meat. The fifth and sixth plagues on Egypt, as described in Exodus chapters 9, the pestilence and 10, the boils, are consistent with anthrax in livestock and humans. In the late 1800s scientists made several important discoveries regarding anthrax. The anthrax germ, Bacillus anthracis, was the first germ linked to a particular disease. In 1881 French scientist Louis Pasteur developed an inoculation to protect animals from the disease. Anthrax emerged as a potential weapon of bioterrorism during the 20th century. Several countries, including the United States, the United Kingdom, Germany, Japan, Iraq, and the former Soviet Union experimented with the bacterium. Beginning in the 1990s, U.S. troops headed for combat in the Persian Gulf were vaccinated for anthrax. Why was the Dred Scott decision important? The decision in the case of Dred Scott pronounced the Missouri Compromise. 1820, unconstitutional and served to deepen the divide between North and South, helping pave the way for the Civil War, 1861-65. In the mid-1800s Dred Scott, c. 1795-1858, who had been born into slavery in Virginia. Tried to claim his freedom on the basis that he had traveled with his owner, a doctor. In Wisconsin and Illinois, where slavery had been prohibited by the Missouri Compromise. By the Compromise, Congress decided to admit Missouri as a slavery state and Maine as a free state and declared that the territories north of the 36th parallel, present-day Missouri's southern border, were free. With the exception of the state of Missouri. After a lifetime of slavery. 
Dred Scott sued Missouri for his freedom in April 1846. The case, which hinged on Scott's travels in free territories in the North, went through two trials, the second was granted due to a procedural error in the first. In 1850, at the conclusion of the second trial, a Missouri jury ruled Scott a free man based on precedents that indicated residence in a free territory or state resulted in emancipation, regardless of the fact that Missouri itself was a slave state. John F. A. Sanford The lawyer for Scott's owner, immediately appealed the decision before the Missouri Supreme Court, where a pro-slavery judge reversed the ruling, rescinding Scott's freedom. But the case was not over yet because Sanford had filed the court papers under his own name rather than that of Scott's former owner, the case of Scott v. Sanford, because of a filing error, the case is also rendered as Scott v. Sanford, took an interesting twist. Scott hired a new lawyer who was able to get the case before the federal court. Sanford had moved to New York, and since the appellant, Scott, and the registered defendant, Sanford, were now residents of different states, the case came under federal purview. In 1854 a circuit court in St. Louis again heard Dred Scott's case, but his freedom was again denied. This decision was appealed to the U.S. Supreme Court, which began hearing the case in 1856. In March 1857 the Supreme Court, which had a Southern majority, ruled that Scott's residence in Wisconsin and Illinois did not make him free, that a black, a Negro descended from slaves had no rights as an American citizen and therefore could not bring suit in a federal court. And that Congress never had the authority to ban slavery in the territories. Dred Scott died the following year. What were lords? Lords, or Siegniers, were wealthy landowners during the Middle Ages, 500-1350. By about the 9th century, much of Western Europe was divided into huge estates, called manors. These were self-sufficient estates that were held by a lord, members of the clergy could also be lords. The lord would lease land to peasants who would farm it, in return. The peasants would pay the lord in taxes, in services, or in kind, with crops or goods. In addition to farmland, a manor would typically have meadow, woodland, and a small village. The lord presided over the entire manor and all the people living there. As the administrator of the land, he collected taxes and presided over legal matters. But the manors were not military entities, in other words. The Lord did not promise protection to the peasants living on his land. As such, the manors were purely socio-economic, as opposed to fiefs which were social, economical, and political units. What is a prophet? Most broadly, a prophet is any person who tells what will happen. 
but in a religious context. Prophets are people who preach what they believe has been divinely revealed to them. In this way, they are seen as instruments of God and are thought to possess profound spiritual and moral insight. Moses was a Hebrew prophet, as were Isaiah and Jeremiah. Among others, Muhammad was an Islamic prophet, and Christians regard Jesus as a prophet. The Bible, Old Testament, also warns of false prophets. In other words, prophets who do not speak the truth. For example, Deuteronomy 13:1-3 says, Should a prophet or a peddler of dreams appear among you and offer you a sign or portent, and call on you to go after other gods whom you have not known and to worship them, of not heed the words of that prophet or dreamer. What is Hinduism? Hinduism, an ancient religion that originated about 1500 B. C and developed over thousands of years. Encompasses the beliefs and practices of the numerous religious sects of India. Each sect has its own philosophy and form of worship. It is a polytheistic religion believing in many gods as well as in one great god. Or universal spirit, called Brahman. Hindu doctrine is centered on sacred scriptures including the Veda, which includes the Upanishads. Dialogues describing sacrificial rituals and religious ceremonies, the Puranas, stories about Hindu gods and goddesses. And the Mahabharata, which contains the Bhagavad Gita, or the Song of the Lord. In which the god Krishna discusses the meaning of life with a warrior prince on the eve of battle. Hindus worship alone at temples, which are dedicated to divinities. Followers also practice yoga, believing that it leads to knowledge and union with God. How long did people believe in the theory of spontaneous generation? Spontaneous generation, the theory that living things can develop from non-living things. Originated in prehistoric times and held sway throughout the Middle Ages, 500-1350. One of the first scientists to test this theory was Italian physician Francesco Ridi, 1626-1697. In 1668 Reedy demonstrated that as long as meat was covered, maggots would not form on it. When left uncovered, flies would land on the meat, lay eggs, and thus, produce maggots. Despite Reedy's findings, the theory of spontaneous generation continued to influence scientists and physicians for centuries. It was ultimately discredited by the successive experiments of Dutch naturalist Antony van Leeuwenhoek. 1632-1723, French chemist and microbiologist Louis Pater, 1822-1895. And German physician and pioneer bacteriologist Robert Koch, 1843-1910 who together proved that bacteria cause infectious diseases.
What is the Mycenaean age? The Dorians, aided by the superiority of the Iron Sword, flooded southward. Where they sacked and burned the great Mycenaean cities and conquered the wealthy sea traders. Throwing Greece into the period known as the Dark Ages, or Archaic Period, which lasted from 1100 to about 800 B. C. When was the first newspaper published? Newspapers, publications that are issued regularly, usually daily or weekly. To notify readers of current events, had their first recorded appearance about 59 B. C when Romans posted a daily handwritten news report in public places. The report was called the Acta Diurna, or Daily Events. In about AD 700 the Chinese developed the world's first printed newspaper. Called the Daibao, it was printed from carved wooden blocks. The invention of the movable type printing press, c. 1450, spurred the development of the newspaper as we know it. In Germany regularly published newspapers began being circulated in the early 1600s. Newspapers proliferated in the 1800s after the development of a machine that allowed paper to be produced in sheets of any size. What are reparations? Reparations are payments or other compensations made to a group of people who have been wronged or injured. The issue was in the news in the 1990s and early 2000s as lawmakers, academics and other leaders pressed for a redress for slavery which some scholars call the American, or Black. Holocaust The precedents for making reparations were several, the German government made reparations to survivors and families of victims of the Nazi Holocaust. And the American government made reparations to Japanese Americans who had been interned during World War II. 1939 to 45 as well as to native americans for damages done to them the recent discussion of reparations began in 1989 when u.s representative john conyers michigan introduced a bill hr 40 in congress to establish a commission to examine the institution of slavery and economic discrimination against African Americans and if so determined, to make recommendations to the Congress on appropriate remedies. As the idea of reparations gained currency in the American public in the 1990s, supporters argued that redress for slavery would help heal the open wound of race relations and would compensate the descendants of slaves whose ancestors' work had helped build the national economy. They further argued that slavery resulted in long-term discrimination that beleaguered black Americans. They were the victims of a centuries-old government-sanctioned system that established a legacy of race-based injustices. African-American activist and author Randall Robinson explained it this way. 
No nation can enslave a group of people for hundreds of years, set them free bedraggled and penniless to pit them. Without assistance, in a hostile environment against privileged victimizers. And then reasonably expect the gap between the ears of the two groups to narrow. Lines begun parallel and left alone can never touch. In bolstering support for reparations, Robinson pointed to the consequences of this massive injustice. That blacks in the United States experience high rates of infant mortality. Low incomes, high rates of unemployment, substandard education, high death rates. Below average lifespans, and overrepresentation in prisons and on death row. Critics of reparations said that compensating the descendants of slaves was unrealistic. Determining who would be paid would alone constitute an expensive government program. They also questioned why descendants of slaves should be paid by the government a century and a half after the end of the brutal system. Further, they argued that other programs, born of the civil rights movement, have strived to bring equity to African Americans. Despite criticism, Representative Conyers resolved to reintroduce his bill as often as necessary until Congress would act on it. He emphasized that his goal was to create a commission, informed by town hall meetings, to first determine if there should be reparations and if so, who should be paid and how much. H.R. 40 had received the support of the city councils of Detroit, Cleveland, Chicago, and Atlanta. Was King Tut the greatest ruler of ancient Egypt? No, in fact, King Tut's reign was relatively unimportant in the vast history of ancient Egypt. A ruler of the 18th dynasty, Tutankhamun, c. 1370-1352 BC, was in power from age 9, 1361 BC. Until his death at the age of 18 a nine-year period that would be of little significance were it not for the November 1922 discovery of his tomb in the Valley of the Kings near ancient Thebes, present-day Luxor. Of the 27 pharaohs buried near Thebes, only the tomb of the minor king, Tutankhamun, was spared looting through the ages. Having not been opened since ancient times, the tomb still contained its treasures. In the antechamber English archaeologist Howard Carter, 1873-1939, found more than 600 artifacts. Including funerary bouquets, sandals, robes, cups and jars, a painted casket. Life-size wooden statues of Tutankhamun, animal-sided couches, remnants of chariots, and a golden throne. In the burial chambers a team of archaeologists discovered four golden shrines and the golden coffin. Containing the royal mummy of Tutankhamun complete with a golden mask covering his head and shoulders. Earlier in his career, Carter had discovered the tombs of King Tut's predecessors. Queen Hatshepsut, c. 1520-c. 1468 BC, and King Thutmose IV. D. 1417 BC, both of whom were also rulers during Egypt's 18th dynasty.
When was the first heart transplant? The world's first heart transplant took place on December 3, 1967, in Cape Town, South Africa. Surgeon Christian Barnard, 1922-2001, conducted the operation, the patient lived for 18 days. Over the next two years, more than a hundred heart transplant operations were performed. But the survival rate was not encouraging. Surgeons have continued the practice with moderately improved results. While some heart recipients have lived as long as six years after the procedure, only 20% of the recipients survive more than one year. How was paper invented? The oldest writing surfaces in existence include Babylonian clay tablets and Indian palm leaves. Around 3000 BC the Egyptians developed a writing material using papyrus. The plant for which paper is named. Early in the Holy Roman Empire, the long manuscript scrolls that were made of Fragile papyrus and used by Egyptians, Greeks, and Romans were replaced by the codex. Separate pages bound together at one side and having a cover, like the modern book. Eventually, papyrus was replaced by vellum, made of a fine grain lambskin, kidskin, or calf skin. And parchment, made of sheepskin or goat skin both of which provided superior surfaces for painting. The wood-derived paper we know today was developed in AD 105 by the Chinese, who devised a way to make tree bark, hemp, rags, and fishnets into paper. The process used then contained the basic elements that are still found in paper mills today. The Moors introduced paper making to Europe, Spain, in about 1150. By the 1400s paper was being made throughout Europe. But it was not until the late 1700s that paper was produced in continuous rolls. In 1798 a French paper mill clerk invented a machine that could produce a continuous sheet of paper in any desired size from wood pulp. The machine was improved and patented by English paper makers Henry, 1766 to 1854, and Seely Fordrenier, D. 1847, in 1807. The invention spurred the development of newspapers. Why is Shakespeare widely studied? English dramatist Ben Jonson 1572-1637, said it best when he proclaimed that Shakespeare was not of an age, but for all time. Most teachers and students, not to mention critics and theatergoers down through the ages. Likely agree with Johnson's remark, Shakespeare's canon, consisting of 37 plays, divided into comedies, tragedies, or histories, plus poems and sonnets, expresses universal and unchanging human concerns as no other works have. Shakespeare's words are familiar even to those who have not studied them. 
not simply because of the many contemporary adaptations of his works. But because Shakespearean phrases and variations thereof have, through the years, fallen into common usage. Consider these few examples from Hamlet alone, neither a borrower nor a lender be. To thine own self be true, and the plays the thing. No other writer's plays have been produced so often or read so widely in so many countries. Did all Southern lawmakers leave Washington once the South seceded? All but one, even after the South seceded and the first shot of the war was fired at Fort Sumter. South Carolina, Senator Andrew Johnson, 1808-1875, of Tennessee opted not to leave the Union. The fact that Johnson did not stick with the state he represented may seem a surprising move. But it reveals one of his most fundamental and fiercely held beliefs. He maintained an unswerving trust in the Constitution. Consequently, he viewed secession as not only treasonous but illegal. His decision to remain with the Union proved politically advantageous to Johnson, a Democrat. In 1862 President Abraham Lincoln, 1809-1865, appointed him military governor of Tennessee. When Abraham Lincoln went on to a second term in office, in March 1865, Johnson was his vice president. He had held this job for a scant six weeks when Lincoln was assassinated. April 14, and Johnson assumed the presidency. How many leaders did the Soviet Union have? From its formation in 1922, just five years after Tsarist Russia had fallen in the Revolution of 1917. The Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, U. SSR, had only ten leaders. But just five of these had meaningful tenure. Either due to length of time served or true authority, Lenin, Stalin, Khrushchev, Brezhnev, and Gorbachev. After Tsarist Russia ended with the revolution of 1917, Bolshevik leader Vladimir Lenin. 1870-1924, became head of the Soviet Russian government as chairman of the Council of People's Commissars. The Communists dissolving the elected assembly and establishing a dictatorship. This lasted six years, when Lenin died of a stroke in 1924, Joseph Stalin. 1879-1953, who had been an associate of Lenin promptly eliminated his opposition and in 1929 established himself as a virtual dictator. Stalin ruled the USSR during World War II, 1939-45. And though he was aligned with the United States, Britain, and the other allied nations during that conflict, soon after the war, he began a build-up of power in Eastern Europe, leading to the Cold War, 1947-89. Even though Stalin's domestic policies were extremely repressive and he ruled largely by terror. He remained in power until his death in 1953. After Stalin died, the Soviet Union entered a brief period of struggle among its top leaders. 
Deputy Premier Georgi Malenkov, 1902-1988, a longtime Stalin aide, came to power. In 1955 Malenkov was forced to resign, and he was succeeded by his and Stalin's, former Defense Secretary, Nikolai Volganin, 1895-1975. However, Bulganin was a premier in name only, the true power rested with Communist Party Secretary Nikita Khrushchev. 1894-1971, who expelled Bulganin and officially took power as premier in 1958. Khrushchev denounced the oppression of the long Stalin years, which had ended only five years earlier and worked to improve living standards. On the international front, he pursued a policy of peaceful coexistence with the West and even toured the United States in 1959, meeting with President Dwight D. Eisenhower. 1890-1969, in 1960 a U.S. reconnaissance plane was shot down over the USSR, raising doubts among the Soviets about Khrushchev's policy toward the West. Further troubles at home resulted from widespread hunger due to crop failures. Meantime, Khrushchev advanced the cause of Soviet space exploration. Beginning the so-called space race with the United States. Eventually, his stance on international issues, which included a rift with Communist China, led to his downfall. He was removed from power in October 1964. Khrushchev's ouster, which was a forced retirement, had been engineered by his former ally and political advisor Leonid Brezhnev, 1906-1982. With Khrushchev out of the way. Technically, Brezhnev was to lead the country along with Premier Alexei Kosygin, 1904 to 1981. But as head of the Communist Party, it was Brezhnev who truly held the power. By the early 1970s, Brezhnev emerged as the Soviet chief, even though Kosygin remained in office until 1980. During his administration, Brezhnev kept tight control over the Eastern Bloc, communist countries, built up the Soviet Union's military, in what became an arms race with the United States, and did nothing to try to reverse the downward trend of the Soviet Union's economy. When Brezhnev died in 1982, he was succeeded by Yuri Andropov, 1914-1984. However, Andropov died two years later and Konstantin Chernenko, 1911-1985, replaced him as premier. When Chernenko, too, died an untimely death in March 1985, Mikhail S. Gorbachev, 1931, became head of the Communist Party and leader of the Soviet Union. With Gorbachev, the reign of the old guard of Stalin-trained leaders had come to an end. Gorbachev's policies of openness to the West and economic development led to the disintegration of the Soviet Union. With communist rule ending in 1991 and each Soviet republic setting up its own government. What happened to Slobodan Milosevic? Like other Serb leaders involved in the recent Baltic Wars, former Yugoslav President Slobodan Milosevic 
1941, faced charges of genocide, war crimes, and crimes against humanity at the International Court Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia, ICTY, in The Hague. He was arrested in Belgrade on April 1, 2001, and transferred to The Hague in June. There he faced 66 counts of war crimes from the Balkan conflicts. Before the ICTY, he pled innocent of three indictments against him. One for each major war crime seen, Kosovo, Croatia and Bosnia. His trial began on February 12, 2002, and was marked by numerous idiosyncrasies. Including Milosevic's attempts to represent himself, without the benefit of counsel. His frequent refusals to cooperate with the court, and numerous days lost to his various illnesses. The prosecution wrapped up its case against him on February 25, 2004. After hearing testimony from almost 300 witnesses. The defense portion of the trial began on August 31, 2004, and was slated to last 150 court days. Not the same as calendar days. As of June 2005 the trial was still underway in The Hague. How long has the waltz been danced? Considered the quintessential ballroom dance, the waltz first became popular in Europe in 1813. But it dates as far back as the mid 1700s. The first written occurrence of the word waltz was in 1781. In the 1850s the dance captivated Vienna, and the prolific Johann Strauss, 1825-1899. Also known as the Waltz King, produced scores of new waltzes to meet the increasing demand. Many of the compositions were named for professional associations and societies. One of the most well-known waltzes is the Blue Danube. First performed by Strauss on February 15, 1867, in Vienna. The lyrics, from a poem by Karl Beck, were sung by the Viennese Male Singing Society. The new waltz created an immediate sensation. It is an Austrian tradition whenever the Blue Danube is played that the opening strain is played first followed by a pause before the work is played by the full orchestra. The pause is so that the audience may applause. What was a papal state? A papal state was a manor or fief where the lord was a member of the clergy. In 754 Carolingian King Pepin the Short, c. 714-768, granted extensive lands to the Pope. These territories, which included much of what is now the Mediterranean coast of France as well as most of central Italy were organized by the Roman Catholic Church into states. These states played an important role in medieval life. Like the fiefs, the papal states collected taxes and maintained courts of law. Also, 
like their secular counterparts, they were prone to war and invasion. Thus members of the Roman Catholic Church were temporal as well as spiritual leaders during the Middle Ages, 500-1350. The last of the territories held by the Church was in central Italy and included Rome. After 1871 these lands were claimed by Italy. The resulting land dispute, sometimes referred to as the Roman Question, was settled by the Lateran Treaty, 1929, which created the sovereign state known as Vatican City. How many nations are members of the UN today? In 2005 the United Nations UN, membership stood at 191 nations. With the most recent additions having been Switzerland and Timorlst, East Timor, in 2002. The membership of the UN grew steadily after it was founded in 1945. Originally there were 51 member states, including Canada. France, the United Kingdom, the USSR, today the Russian Federation, and the United States. Within a decade, 25 more countries had been added to the UN's membership roster. By 1965 there were 117 members, by 1975, 144 members, by 1985, 159 members, and by 1995, 185 members. What was the worst industrial accident? It was the gas leak at a Union Carbide chemical plant in Bhopal, India, on December 3, 1984, at about 12.30 a.m., methyl isocyanate, Mike, a deadly gas, began escaping from the pesticide plant. And it spread southward, eventually covering approximately 15 square miles. Within a few hours, thousands of Bhopal residents were affected by the asphyxiating gas. General symptoms included severe chest congestion, vomiting, paralysis, sore throat, chills, coma, fever, swelling of legs, impaired vision, and palpitations. Estimates of the total death toll range from the official government estimate between 3,000 and 10,000. A figure based on what medical professionals described. In total, 200,000 people were directly or indirectly affected by the poisonous gas. Within hours of the accident Bhopal police moved into action. Closing the plant and arresting its manager and four of his assistants. The five men were charged with culpable homicide through negligence. Union Carbide dispatched a team of technical experts from its Danbury, Connecticut headquarters, but upon arrival at the plant, they were turned away by local authorities. Meanwhile, the Indian Central Bureau of Investigation seized the plant's records and logbooks and ordered an inquiry into the accident. Union Carbide's chief executive officer Warren M. Anderson flew to Bhopal, but he was promptly arrested. 
along with two officials of the company's Indian subsidiary. The corporate executives were charged with seven offences including criminal conspiracy. Culpable homicide not amounting to murder, making the atmosphere noxious to health, and causing death by negligence. Anderson was later released on bond. Upon learning of the horrific accident, U.S. President Ronald Reagan, 1911 to 2004, sent a message conveying the grief shared by him and the American people. Multinational corporations, including Union Carbide, were vilified in the press. The Soviet news agency accused such companies of marketing low-quality products and outdated technology to developing countries. Prime Minister Rajiv Gandhi, 1944-1991, of India visited the disaster site and announced Immediate creation of a $4-million relief fund for victims he also vowed that he would prevent multinational corporations from setting up dangerous factories in India. The implications of the industrial accident were many. It prompted public scrutiny of safety systems at chemical plants around the globe. Given the number of plants where poisonous chemicals are produced and stored. Some observers believe chemical accidents could happen as often as once in every 10 years. Union Carbide, of course, suffered financially, the stock dropped more than 12 points. Wiping out 27%, or almost $1 billion, of its market value, in about one week. Damage claims were filed in behalf of the victims. With noted American criminal attorney Melvin Belly filing one of them in the amount of $15 billion. In addition to the thousands who died in Bhopal. Others suffered from long-term effects including chronic lesions of the eyes, permanent scarring of the lungs. And injuries to the liver, brain, heart, kidneys, and the immune system. In the years after the accident, studies showed that the rate of spontaneous abortions and infant deaths in Bhopal were three to four times the regional rate. How old is the World Wide Web? The web, which adds an ease of use layer to the internet by providing a graphical user interface. GUI, was developed in 1990 by English computer scientist Tim Berners-Lee. 1955, who wrote the web software at the CERN Physics Laboratory near Geneva, Switzerland. Berners-Lee wrote a program defining hypertext markup language, HTML Hypertext Transfer Protocol, HTTP, and Universal Resource Locators, URLs The web became part of the Internet in 1991 and has played a major role in the growing popularity of the International Computer Network, making information more accessible to the user via multimedia interfaces which allow the presentation of graphics, formatted text and hyperlinks, photos, and illustrations, as well as streaming or downloadable audio and video. Did Henry Ford invent the automobile?
No, while Henry Ford, 1863 to 1947, transformed American industry and changed the way we travel. Live, and work, he did not invent the automobile. Just before the turn of the century, there were several inventors who were tinkering with gas-powered vehicles. And by the time Ford had finished his first working car, the Duryea brothers, Charles. 1861-1938, Frank, 1869-1967, had demonstrated the first successful gas-powered car in the United States. An Ohio-born inventor Ransom Eli Olds, 1864-1950, already had a car, the Oldsmobile, in production. Even prior to the work of these American inventors and entrepreneurs, Europeans had made strides in developing the automobile. The automobile is the result of a series of inventions. Which began in 1769 when French military engineer Nicolas Joseph Cugnot, 1725 to 1804, built a steam-powered road vehicle. In the early 1800s other inventors also experimented with this idea. And the steam-powered vehicle was put into production, both in Europe and the United States. In 1899 William McKinley, 1843 to 1901, became the first U.S. president to ride in a car a Stanley steamer. Built by twin brothers Francis, 1849 to 1918, and Freeland, 1849 to 1940, Stanley. A breakthrough in developing gas-powered automobiles came in 1860, when an Internal combustion engine was patented by Frenchman Etienne Lenore, 1822-1900. But the car as we know it was born in 1885 when Germans got Lieb Daimler, 1834-1900, and Karl Benz. 1844-1929, working independently of each other, developed the forerunners of the gas engines used today. In 1891-1892 French company Panhard E.T. Levisser designed a front-engine, rear-wheel-drive automobile. This concept remained relatively unchanged for nearly 100 years. Until 1900 Europeans led the world in the development and production of automobiles. In 1896 the Duryea Motor Wagon Company turned out the United States' first production motor vehicle. The gas-powered cars were available for purchase that same year. The development of the car was helped by advances in rubber and in the development of pneumatic tires during the 19th century, with names like Charles Goodyear, American. 1800 to 60, John Boyd Dunlop, Scottish, 1840 to 1921, and the Michelin brothers, French. Andre, 1853 to 1931, and Edouard, 1859 to 1940, figuring prominently in automotive history. Even after the gas engine was invented, which was ultimately more efficient than the steam engine. The car's development continued along parallel tracks. About 1891 American William Morrison successfully developed an electric car. Electric cars were soon put into production. And by the turn of the century they accounted for just less than 40% of all American car sales. How was Cortez able to claim Mexico for the Spaniards?
on behalf of the European power, Hernan Cortés, 1485-1547. Claimed Mexico after conquering its native peoples. In 1519 Cortés landed on the eastern coast of Mexico and founded the city of Veracruz. From there he marched inland, making an alliance with the Tlaxcalan Indians. Who had fought wars against the powerful Aztecs in central Mexico. On November 8 of that year, Cortes marched into Mexico City. Then named Tenochtitlan, and took the Aztec leader, Montezuma, hostage. Cortes then continued to Mexico's west coast. When he returned to Mexico City in the central part of the country in 1520, he found the Aztecs in revolt against the Spaniards. Fierce fighting ensued, and by the end of June Montezuma was dead. This period of warfare is still remembered today by Mexicans as La Noche Triste, the Sorrowful Night. It was not until the following year, in August 1521, that Cortes, after a four-month battle, claimed Mexico City, and the land came under control of the Spanish. Why is Henry VIII so famous? The reign of Henry VIII, from 1509 to 1547, is perhaps the most well-known Tudor monarchy. It was marked by papal conflicts and England's subsequent break with the Roman Catholic Church. When Henry's wife, Catherine of Aragon, 1485 to 1536, failed to produce a male heir, he appealed to the Pope to grant him a divorce. The request was of course denied. Though Henry went on to have his marriage to Catherine declared invalid. On the grounds that she was his brother's widow, and he secretly married Anne Boleyn, c. 1507-1536, in 1533, his troubles with the church continued. In 1534 he set up the Church of England, declaring the monarch as its head. He went to extreme measures to ensure the act was upheld even executing his appointed chancellor. Sir Thomas More, 1478-1535, for his refusal to acknowledge royal supremacy. Henry VIII was eventually successful in procuring a male heir to the throne but it required a third marriage, to Jane Seymour, c. 1509-1537 his son, Edward VI, 1537-53, succeeded him in 1547. Nevertheless, it was Henry VIII's daughters who went on to make history. Mary I, who ruled England and Ireland from 1553 to 1558, was the daughter of Henry and his first wife, Catherine of Aragon. In 1554 Mary wed Spain's Philip II, 1527 to 1598, forming a temporary alliance between the two powers. The following year she realigned England with the Catholic Church. Undertaking the persecution of Protestants and earning herself the name Bloody Mary. What was the Code Napoleon?
In 1800, just after Napoleon Bonaparte, 1769 to 1821, had come to power in France. He appointed a commission of legal experts to consolidate all French civil law into one code. The process took four years, the so-called Code Civil went into effect on March 21, 1804, the same year that Napoleon named himself Emperor of France, which he did in December. The laws thus took on the alternate name of the Code Napoleon or Napoleonic Code. It went into force throughout France, Belgium, Luxembourg, and in other French territories and duchies in Europe. The code represented a compromise between Roman law and common, or customary, law. Further, it accommodated some of the radical reforms of the French Revolution, 1789-99. The Code Civil set forth laws regarding individual liberty, tenure of property, order of inheritance, mortgages, and contracts. It had broad influence in Europe as well as in Latin America, where civil law is prevalent. As opposed to the common law of most English-speaking countries. Civil law judgments are based on codified principles, rather than on legal precedent. For example, under the code civil an accused person is guilty until proven innocent. As opposed to common law, which holds that a person is innocent until proven guilty. What was Roman law? It was the system of law used by the Romans from the 8th century B. C. Until the fall of the Empire, Rome, in the West Roman Empire, was toppled in AD 476, the East Empire fell in AD 1453. Justinian the Great, 483 to 565, the Emperor of the East Roman Empire, is credited with codifying, writing and organizing Roman law by ordering the collection of all imperial statutes and of all the writings of the Roman jurists, judges and other legal experts. Justinian appointed the best legal minds in the empire to assemble, write, publish, and update the code. Work began in and continued until the time of Justinian's death. In 565, the result was the Corpus Juris Civilis, body of civil law, also called the Justinian Code. It consists of four parts the Codex, a collection of imperial statutes, the Digest, the writings and interpretations of Roman jurists, the Institutes, a textbook for students, and the novels, the laws enacted after the publication of the Codex. Though largely suspended during the Middle Ages, 500-1350, it was kept alive in the canon law of the medieval church and was handed down through the centuries. It forms the basis of modern civil law in most of continental Europe and in other non-English speaking countries, as well as in the state of Louisiana. Nations or states whose systems of justice are based on civil law rely not on precedents set by the courts which is the common law system of the United States and Great Britain. But rather on the letter of the law the statutes themselves.
How old is the dramatic form of tragedy? Tragedy, a form of drama central to Western literature, dates to ancient times the 5th century B. C. When Greeks held a religious festival to honor the god Dionysus. God of fertility, wine, and, later, drama. Famous ancient tragedies include Oresteia by Aeschylus, who is credited with inventing tragedy. Oedipus Rex by Sophocles and Medea and Trojan Women by Euripides. The philosopher Aristotle observed that tragedy's function is a cathartic one by participating in the drama. The spectators are purged of their emotions of pity and fear. The well-known Renaissance tragedies of William Shakespeare, 1564-1616, hearken back to the works of Roman statesman and playwright Seneca, c4b.ca.d65, who wrote during the first century. He is credited with creating dramatic conventions including unity of time and place. Violence, bombastic language, revenge, and ghostly appearances.